Okay, it's happening. The Cardinals' number one prospect, Mason Wynn, has been called up to the major leagues and is in the lineup tonight. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. That's where I'm at, at J.D. Sports Radio. The podcast is there as well, at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. If you haven't gone over there to uh, check us out yet, we invite you. This is your invite. Be sure to stop by, like, subscribe, and comment. Make sure you're liking and, uh, you know, helping the, the channel grow because it continues to grow like some of the prospects of the Cardinals organization. And we want it to continue to grow even bigger and better each and every day, but we can't do it without you. So like, subscribe, and comment. That way you're interacting with us. Hit the notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans of baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. All right. All right. Who's excited? As we continue to uh, you know, put our best positive spin on this season, which I know isn't exactly easy, but sometimes like, like a garden. Okay. I'm not somebody who hangs out in the garden a lot, but I know how they work. So like a garden, you got to pull out the dead flowers and, and the weeds. Got to get them out of the way. That way you can plant some fresh new items and allow them some time to, to blossom and to flourish in place of those empty spots where it's not that those plants were bad, but it was time to move on. It's going to make your yard look good again. And that's what we're trying to do here with the St. Louis Cardinals. And that's essentially what the Cardinals have done. You know, they, they and it's what they should have been doing. Okay. This is not something that they should have been waiting on for the team to not do well before it finally started happening, they need to learn that at certain points, they need to move on from certain guys and get ahead of the game. And they haven't done that very well. Uh, they usually hang on to guys a little bit too long. But they remove guys this year, like Paul DeYoung, Jack Flaherty, and Jordan Hicks, guys you know that have been with this organization since day one and have now moved on to better places than where the Cardinals are right now. It doesn't mean you exactly have to like those moves. I'm not saying that <clears throat> that you can't, it, you being upset that they got rid of Jack Flaherty or Jordan Hicks. I don't know a lot of people that were upset that Paul DeYoung moved on, but you know, some people wish that they had specifically hung on to Hicks. I was one of them. I was hoping they could get a deal done, but that didn't happen. Uh, some people are upset that Jack Flaherty was shipped away. They thought they should have kept him. I know some of you laugh when I say that, but it's true. Have you seen the comments on YouTube and on Twitter? Like, go read them. People lose their minds over this stuff. You know, they get attached to things, and, it, and it's human nature to not want to let go of them. You know, the Cardinals are, are kind of hoarders when it comes to their players. They keep them around for quite some time until they're kind of, they're really washed up, and then they try to, to, to get rid of them. Well, in this case... They weren't winning this year, so they were able to make those moves and not feel bad about it, all right? Because you guarantee you, if the Cardinals were winning this year, none of those guys would have been moved. They'd all still be on this roster, and then we would have had to figure it out in the offseason when they all became free agents at the same time. So, blessing in disguise, maybe, that they, they had a bad season this year. I don't want to go that far, but at the same time, it's allowing things to happen, you know? Understand that these players moving on has now allowed new players to get a chance to make a contribution this season and prove themselves at the major league level. No longer do they have to sit down there in Memphis and wait anymore. They, they've been allowed to come up and perform 
in the big leagues. Matthew Libertor getting these opportunities to face big league hitters on a on a consistent basis, something he needs to do. You see how he is one day against the Rays. He's amazing. And then he comes out against the A's and he's not very good at all. You know, he's got to work on these things and doing it down in Memphis isn't going to do him any good. You know, he needs to do it up here in the big leagues. Uh, Tonight's starter, Zach Thompson, ha- has dealt with a bunch of different issues, but now he's getting chances to see if he's going to be a starter or a reliever next year. I don't know if they've decided that. Probably not. <laughs> they've been going back and forth between it. But so far, since he's been back up in the major leagues, he's looked pretty good in both roles. So credit to him. Uh, Luke and Baker, although not yet hitting at the major league level, is at least getting a look and is getting a chance to play, you know, since he's been called up again. And now the Cardinals' top prospect, Mason Wynn, is going to get a chance. And I'm really, really excited about it. Following last night's loss to the New York Mets, the uh, team placed outfielder Lars Nupar on the injured list with a lower abdomen contusion. We all know what he's dealing with. It, Jay, he, he, took a, he took a shot in the wrong spot. And um, they've decided that they're going to call up a guy who are we, who we are all hoping will be the shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals for at least the next decade, right? That's what you're hoping for. That, that would be this working. Uh, we saw the talent in spring training. We know how good he was. We got a, a nice long look at him. And just it just with the eye test, you know, I didn't, hadn't seen him play all that much. He, he was down in A ball in double A last year. So I didn't get to see him a lot. But the eye test of him in spring training you can just tell he's there's something special about him. It's just the way the way he moves, the way he reacts to things. He's just got that it factor about him. He was hitting for average. He was stealing bases. He was hitting home runs, playing stellar defense, not only at shortstop, which is his normal position, but he scooted over to second base. It was just fine over there, too. Um. He's got that Thunderbolt right arm that everybody has talked about that you can't help but be in awe of. I mean, he's legitimately the total package that you want on an infielder. He can beat you in so many areas of the game. His only problem was his age. He was 20 years old, and the Cardinals had some guys ahead of him. You had Tommy Edmond, uh, Paul DeYoung. You had Brendan Donovan, who could play shortstop as well. There was no need because of those guys to rush Mason Wynn to the big league, straight from double A to the majors, like they did with Jordan Walker, which I still say was a mistake. I will die on that hill. There was no reason for them to put him on the opening day roster, except for the fact that they wanted the show. It just didn't make any sense to me. And as Wynn continued to thrive at Memphis and the Cardinals season continued to deteriorate, you knew that eventually this team was going to call him up. They were going to make that call, get him some major league experience, get him some big league seasoning. And when Paul DeYoung was traded, that that was like the first domino because they love Paul DeYoung and they, they weren't going to just bench him. So when he was dealt, first domino goes down. Then you lose Brendan Donovan for the year with the elbow issue. That's another domino. Not that Brendan Donovan played a ton of shortstop, but he was somebody that stood in the way because Donovan could have played some shortstop. And then when Newbar and Edmund and Gorman, all of them at the same time, <laughs> had some sort of issue, uh, you knew it was inevitable. The team just had to wait on one thing, and that was for the date so that he wouldn't lose his rookie eligibility next season. That, that was the final hurdle in this whole thing. Well, then he had the the minor glute strain that you know sent some shimmers through the uh, community for a moment there, but he was back in a couple of days, so we're not worried about that. But now he's here. Now he's here, and I cannot wait to see him in action. Manager Ali Marmel, he's feeling the same way, telling MLB.com's uh, John Denton that uh, he's one of the most exciting players I've seen in a while, and I am thrilled that he's coming up, and we'll get a chance to see it up here. This is an electric player. For sure. His brother from another mother, Jordan Walker. The two are very, very tight, by the way. Also knew it was just a matter of time before his buddy was sharing a clubhouse with him again, saying, quote, he's been going off down there with AAA Memphis, and he's been feeling really great lately. So it's great to see him doing so well. We've been through so many ups and downs together, and seeing him do his thing now in AAA is so special to me. I'm excited to start playing with him again, for sure. 
So what exactly can we expect from number zero? Because in case you didn't hear, that is the number that he chose. Because apparently it was the closest number that was available to number one, which we all know was held by Ozzy Smith, who Mason Wynn worked with in spring training and got to know him very, very well. So I thought that was a cool story, that that's why he wanted number zero. So it's going to look good on him tonight because he's in the lineup. So we're going to talk about that and uh, what exactly we can expect from Mason Wynn. We'll do that next on Locked on Cardinals. Men, are you tired of weakening or thinning hair? Do you want to reach your full hair potential? Leading hair growth supplement, Nutrafol, helps improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. It is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. What you need to do is go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their hair health wellness quiz. Okay. Identify the causes of your thinning hair because everybody's a little bit different. We, we all go through it at some point, but identify the causes of your particular case, your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through whole body wellness. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting root caused by uh, of the thinning, such as stress and hormones, environment, nutrition your lifestyle, a lot of things go into this, metabolism. It's all through whole body health, and it works. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol, men's hair growth supplements. So take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month, first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code Locked On MLB. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men, and enter promo code locked on MLB. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code, promo code locked on MLB. The Cardinals battle the Mets again tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Again, thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. You can always leave comments on YouTube as well as on Twitter uh, anytime you want. Feedback, negative, positive, whatever you got to get off your chest, you let me know. I'm here for you. So last night's game, uh, that was a bummer, right? Because Adam Wainwright, he finally pitches well enough to pick up a win, to go get that win number 199. Hadn't had a chance to really do that since the game that he pitched well in Arizona. But unfortunately, the offense, the offense doesn't show up. They were lacking. They fall to former Cardinals uh, pitcher Jose Quintana and the Mets 4-2. to two. Now we can sit here and complain about the offense, but you know, and I know at this moment, this Cardinals offense is not a complete hole right now. A lot of people missing. You got a, a banged up Tommy Edmond playing some center field and shortstop still. Props to him for fighting through that calf contusion, which he uh, which he just got the other day. He's dealing with that. You got Wilson Contreras, who's clearly fighting through some hip issues. Uh, no new bar, no Brandon Donovan, no Gorman. Instead, you got Taylor Motter and Jose Fermin in there. God bless those two guys, but they don't belong on a major league roster, right? They just don't. At least they haven't proven that they deserve to, or they should be there. They deserve the chances because they've done well uh, in the minors, but we know what they really are. So normally in the Cardinals everyday lineup, the spark plug at the top of the order is either Brendan Donovan or Lars Newbar. Those are the guys who have been up there the most. Uh, both of them, they're gone right now. They're out. Um Tommy Edmond, we've tried to make Tommy Edmond a leadoff hitter for a long time. He just doesn't seem that comfortable up there. He he does better in other spots in the order, like number two spot or the number seven spot, and the numbers back it up. His numbers at leadoff aren't like horrible, but they're not great. 261 average, 312 OBP. I mean, you're not going to want that out of your leadoff hitter, but in a much smaller sampler, sample size, he's done better in those other two spots, hitting 300. 348 OBP in the number two spot, 308, 342 OBP at number seven. 
Actually, I think it's supposed to be 352 at, at, at number seven. I'll have to look that up again. But anyway, it better than what he does at lead up. Let's put it that way. And now you got Mason Wynn coming in. All right. Mason Wynn's coming in. Exceptional in the leadoff spot down in Memphis this year. For the season, hitting 288, OBP 359, OPS 834. It's a good combination, right? He led the league in runs with 99, but he's also got the pop, 18 dingers, hit another one last night. He's got the speed, 17 stolen bases, only got caught twice this year. And again, when you've got the big dogs behind you bashing the ball around like Luke and Baker doing what he was doing, you're not running a lot more because you don't want to risk making an out in front of those guys. You'd rather have them hitting just while you're on base. Doesn't matter if you're on first or not. So that could be a reason why he's not stealing as much. Uh, 2021, he had a combined 32 stolen bases for the year. Then last year, 43 at the end of the season. Uh, he's fast. Wynn has averaged a 30 foot per second sprint speed this season at AAA. Okay. Now you might not know what that means. That's, a, that's an elite threshold. You guys, that is the cream of the crop when it comes to running for, for context, there are only 11, 11 players at the major league level that have averaged at that or above his number in 2023. Some of the names you'll recognize, L.A. De La Cruz, Trey Turner, Bobby Witt Jr., Corbin Carroll, some of the best prospects. And then there's Trey Turner, who's been, you know, elite speed his entire career. Those are some of the names you'll recognize in those 11. But he's faster, this year at least, than Julio Rodriguez, Mike Trout, Byron Buxton, Fernando Tatis Jr., Jeremy Pena with the Astros. Guys that we all know run pretty darn good. He's going to be the fastest guy on the team. Tyler O'Neill, Tommy Edmond, your fastest guys normally, he's past them. So he's... He's special, man. He's going to hit ninth tonight. They're not going to put him in that leadoff spot right away. Coward move, Ali. I guess I understand it. I'm just half joking there. But eventually, you envision him at the top spot being a kind of, and I'm not saying he's going to be exactly like this guy, but it reminds me of a combination of what Ricky Henderson used to be able to do. Speed, power. He's never going to steal 100 and. 30 bases like Ricky Henderson. He's probably not going to hit 30 home runs. I think Ricky hit 28 one year, something like that. Ricky Henderson is a freak. Okay. But the combination, the, the possibility of all that together, that's pretty good. And if you can put that at the top of the lineup, teach him to walk a little bit more, that's good. That's going to be something that's going to bug people that have to face the Cardinals. Uh, what else can we expect from him? Well, uh, we know about his arm, right? The arm is something that has been talked about a lot. 80 grade arm, which if you are unfamiliar with, is the highest number you can get on the scouting scale. We've seen the Reds, L.A. De La Cruz, O'Neill Cruz from the Pirates get all that publicity for their arms, and Mason Wynn is right there with them. You got to remember, Futures game last year, he threw one at 100.5 across the diamond. The major league record was set this year by Ellie De La Cruz at 99.8. So that's something he will likely be, play upon words here, gunning for and gunning to break at some point this season. Could do it tonight. Could do it tonight. Again, he's in the lineup, batting ninth, playing shortstop. Um, I'm excited for it. It, it. If you weren't excited to watch Cardinal baseball and you're starting to, to wane a little bit, this is another reason to be paying attention tonight and for the rest of the season to see this special talent continue uh, his progression in his career. So looking forward to it tonight. We're going to check in on one other minor leaguer that's doing quite well since he became a Cardinal. We'll do that next here on Locked on Cardinals. Want the chance to win more money with less picks? Then head to Sleeper, the number one sports app, where you can win up to 100 times your money on just two or more fantasy baseball picks. Talking about Mason Wynn. You think Mason Wynn, who went yard last night at Memphis, hit his 18th, can hit a home run tonight in his debut against the Mets? Major League debut home run? 
You put it past him, eh, put some money on it if you think he, if he's, if you got a feeling about it tonight. On Sleeper, you can swing for the fences with up to 100 times payouts. All you got to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stat category. So like home runs, like I mentioned, you can do strikeouts, hits, and a whole lot more. It's all available to you. Get your picks right, and you can win big. They got dynamic payouts. Those are live. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, in short, each player projection no now has a uh, multiplayer attached to it uh, as opposed to preset multiplier. So each player projection now has a multiplier attached to it as opposed to preset multipliers based on the number of legs in the contest. So with dynamic payouts, also comes more stack categories to place contests on so it just gives you it gives you more options it gives you more to to look at and it gives you more to win with really you can get higher payouts than other apps and do it with less picks so use the promo code locked on you'll get up to a 100 match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply see sleepers terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 states check out sleeper today The Cardinals are at home again to face the Mets. Zach Thompson will get the uh, start on the hill tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. So now that we buttered up Mason Wynn nice and thick and we got him into the pros. All right, who's another prospect? We got Luke and Baker up. We got Jordan Walker up. We got Mason Wynn up. Who's next? Well, there's another prospect I want to talk about. And he's probably not going to make it up to the big leagues this year. That's okay. He's at double A. But his name is Thomas Sejaci. And Daniel Guerrero at SELtoday.com did a piece on him uh, about how he has just taken off since joining the Cardinals. We've been trying to give you updates on how these guys who've got traded over since the trade deadline have been doing. Most of them have been excelling very, very well. And Sejaci has been one of those guys, one of the prospects they got uh, in the Texas deal, where they sent Jordan Montgomery and Chris Stratton to the Rangers. So far, hitting 327 with a 424 on base percentage and a 673 slugging percentage in 15 games since joining the Cardinals organization. Mwah! You got to love that. He's got five home runs, one of which broke up a no hit bid in the seventh inning of the uh, Cardinals, Springfield Cardinals, not the, the Major League Cardinals, uh, Wednesday road game and drove in nine runs for the club, looking to clinch a uh, second half playoff berth in the Texas League. Now, the five home runs that he's belted as a Cardinals prospect. Gives him a career-high 20 on the year. Uh, so J.C. enters Friday with a career-best 133 hits, and those are the most across Class AA and second in all of minor league baseball. So he's doing some big stuff. Uh, defensively, in his career, he's mostly been a second baseman. Uh, he's played second. He's played short. He's played third. Majority of innings, though, have been at second base. He's played second in 10 of the 15 games since getting traded. And uh, joining Springfield, he's played three at third base, none at shortstop. Uh, I'm sure he'll get some work there, but I'm guessing when you have Mason Wynn <laughs> uh, in front of you in the organization, doesn't really help matters. So might want to learn a, a new position, kind of like Jordan Walker had to because he wasn't moving Nolan Arnato away from third base. Uh, Guerrero points out that through 108 games this season, so JC also has 87 RBIs, that's career high, and the most in all of Class AA at the start of Friday. Among the minor league leaders in hits, he is uh, the only one within the top 10 of hits with at least 20 home runs and one of two among that group with over 80 RBIs. So he's doing elite things that not a lot of people are doing. Uh, so you add that to what we've seen out of Drew Rahm so far, the left-hander they got from the Orioles and the Jack Flaherty trade. <laughs> You got to be pretty pleased with what you're seeing. Um, Prieto has been really, really good. Um, it's hard to it's hard to be upset with what they've gotten out of these prospects so far. So at the moment, you can give a little bit of credit to John Mosellock for now. For now. Don't, don't make his head any bigger, okay? Thanks for making Locks on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast for the series against the Mets throughout the weekend with SiriusXM on the SXM map. Just search Cardinals again tonight. Bush Stadium, Zach Thompson on the mound. First pitch scheduled for 7-15 St. Louis time. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. And I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals. It is winning season. 
Mason Wynn is here. So excited.